Thank you. So we have we have the honor today to have with us uh, Jeff Decou uh, from the Autonomy uh, Institute, uh, the CEO. Uh, pleasure to have you with us, Jeff. Um, I guess you can go ahead uh, with your inspiring speech on severe and intelligent infrastructure. Thank you again for joining us. It's an honor to be here, and I understand the immense challenge of uh, this program, and uh, we're excited to be members by having the hubs in the United States, and we're hoping to help accelerate the adoption of what um, is a critical infrastructure for the 21st century. So this is going to be uh, probably a little bit different than um, prior, you know, cover, you know, talks and uh, panel discussions, but we think it's um, at utmost importance uh, to, to deal with. Um, we're going to be talking about intelligent infrastructure, and uh, we believe the data exchange and what GAIA-X is, is attempting to do is, is part of that. Um, is the slides uh, being displayed? Okay, fantastic. So um, the uh, Autonomy Institute um, will you know, get into what our history is, but um, we've partnered with another company, um, Topio Networks in the United States to establish the, the US hubs that will allow us to take all the foundations you guys are building um, for managing data, securing data and making data sovereign um, um, into the United States. Um, a couple of key points. Um, the Autonomy Institute is a 501c3. Um, it was originally going to be a collaboration with a large contractor in the United States, uh, but then realized in working with government and doing what um, this infrastructure is going to do for the United States, it became clear that it had to be a, a, a catalyst in between government and industry. Uh, we've worked extensively with uh, Topio that is also um, supporting the Intelligent Infrastructure Conference, um, which is going on its second um, uh, you know, uh, conference as of uh, 2023. Um, we officially launched, um, so we have been tracking you know, GAIA-X for, for quite some time. So when we had the opportunity to collaborate uh, with um, Francisco, uh, we took it immediately because we believe the foundation is as is being built um, is critical for the 21st century. And we have established a hub in Texas, in California, and uh, one that will be in Washington, DC, which will help propagate um, others um, across the United States, you realizing that this is should be done at um, a state and in a lot of cases, the city level. Why we believe it's um, you know critical is infrastructure is what drives um, you know, key revolutions. You know, you know Jerry, Jeremy Rifkin has an incredible comment about this. But when we talk about infrastructure, um, we see it in three different buckets. And the most important thing that we see in how um, the movement in the 21st century is moving forward is it's all about data. And that's why GAIA-X is, is such a, um, you know, critical piece in it, because the 21st century will be writ, um, you know, driven by data. And I think all of us have heard time and time again that uh, data is the new oil. Well, if data is new oil and that commodity has that much value, then we have to have new policies and legislation and processes put in place, which of course SkyX is you know championing. When we talk about uh, infrastructure, um, we have been heavily focused on the physical infrastructure that has to be there that's going to allow data exchanges and things like data you know, or digital twins uh, to be propagated um, within the cities and start to serve the, the communities that they're in. Um, and we're kind of highlighting that we see GAIA-X as being the key um, to the establishment of the rules, regulations, and the foundations for the building of these, um, uh, these data exchanges. Why now is such a, an important time in history is having been in the industry uh, for you know well over 30 years, we've always we've seen multiple transitions of data. Um, and we use this chart to kind of explain that if you think about it in the 70s, preponderance of all data was in mainframes or you know behind you know private you know closed doors. And with the advent of the personal computer and uh, the internet, um, the explosion of data, um, move to the edge. Um, and um, basically within a 10 year period, over 70% of all new data was being created 
on desktop servers and client server um, away from mainframes. And then, of course, what we've seen is a, a movement back to a, a equivalent mainframe architecture, um, which is now called the cloud. And then over the next you know, 15 years, we're going to see a rapid acceleration of new infrastructure at the edge that allows the zettabytes of new data to be um, established within a framework of you know, privacy, security, and sovereignty that is conducive of the communities the data is serving. Um, the Autonomy Institute is heavily focused on what are the future um, you know, things that are enabled by having this new infrastructure, these new data platforms. And in the United States, um, broadband for all is a, is a huge initiative, as well as getting things like 5G or 6G deployed, um, electrification of mobility, Vision Zero, which is a, a big push in the United States to save lives on our roadways. But all these things require infrastructure literally on the sidewalk to, um, to accommodate that growth and those applications. The other thing that intelligent infrastructure you know, does um, is I think COVID has taught all of us that um, there's a tremendous opportunity um, in um, collaboration in distance. I mean, the fact that here I am in Austin, Texas, and we're having this collective conversation um, with the, the in incredible group you have over in Paris shows that there's new ways that we can form business um, relationships, partnerships, and uh, collaborate on innovations that help drive society forward. Um, when we talk about intelligent infrastructure, um, we're, we talk about things like PINs, public infrastructure network nodes. I'm sure um, you know, many people have seen things like 5G nodes or other devices being deployed on city streets. Um, think about the PIN as being the condo that allows electronics to be deployed on the, the sidewalk, but all those new sensors, that new compute, that new storage has to be deployed within a framework of security and data sovereignty um, at the regional level. This um, We can't just you know, take a whole bunch of sensors, put them out the edge, and then pull all that data into a mainframe or, or a cloud because a lot of that data can only be used at the edge and only has value to the communities that they serve. In the past, um, many major infrastructure um, initiatives have been done in the United States, you know, dating back to the you know, laying down rail that allowed locomotives to move freight and people. Um, the electric um, revolution, it took seven years for Thomas Edison to convince you know, U.S. investors and cities to start to adopt electricity. Um, but of course, all the impacts and benefits of electricity is, is experienced by everybody. Same thing with auto, um, automotive. Um, Eisenhower um, basically said we need to build interstate highways. It took five years to um, get the United States to, to move on that. And the commerce and the tourism and the freight, all the impacts of that infrastructure has been measured in the hundreds of billions of dollars um, uh, for the, the U.S., and then what we're talking about today is um, in order to support industry 4.0, uh, which is how is data going to be more effectively used, how we can get more advanced services within our communities. It all comes down to a new infrastructure that is you know, really more intimately deployed within our communities, within our cities, and down our highways. And that's the, the mission of the Autonomy Institute. If we don't do this, um, the same thing um, is going to happen that's happened in you know, prior generations of technology. Um, when we started dealing with uh, cities and states uh, back in 2018, they sent pictures um, on the right side. You'll, on the screen, you'll see all these pictures when we were building out electrification and telecommunications in the United States. It overwhelmed the cities with wires and all kinds of um, things being strapped and bolted um, onto the infrastructure. Well, all these future technologies that will basically protect, you know, pedestrians, optimize mobility, and support resilient cities is also needing to be, you know, deployed. But if we do it the current way, which is just strapping, bolting, and attaching onto wood poles, um, we're going to have a very you know, uh, unattractive, you know, cities and communities. And I don't think anybody is looking for that. And 
what we are, um, have developed over the last you know, four years now with over 200 um, uh, industry partners is what is called the PIN, the Public Infrastructure Network Node. And we equate this to what Bell Labs did in 1922 with the advent of the 19-inch rack, um, which is propagated all storage, networking, as well as compute for the last 100 years within our equipment closets, um, you know, storage facilities, data centers, cell towers, you name it. The reason it's been a challenge to finally get to the point where we are um, implementing large projects now is we're dealing with multiple, like in the United States, in order for infrastructure to be adopted, um, you're dealing with uh, many different federal agencies. Um, so, you know, we have FCC, um, NTIA, U.S. Department of Transportation, Homeland Security, and even the FAA and NOAA are involved because where this infrastructure goes really needs to accommodate many, you know, different um, types of technology from many different industries. And that's why public-private partnerships are such an important piece in the, the rollout and the, the, the development. And... What this looks like, this is a, you know, first street in Austin. Um, this is an example of a, a pin, you know, deployed. And think of it, as stated earlier, like a condo. Um, but the condo is not for people. It's for the electronics that get adopted today. But more importantly, for the next, you know, 30 to 40 years. And why this is important is because the data, um, it's all about data. Um, predominantly, um, things like this have been installed in the past to get radio networks you know, deployed, but now the compute and the data is being processed at the edge and um, needs to be you know, secure, sovereign, and really take care of privacy. We, we say that uh, there was a, a famous uh, in the US, um, Horace you know, Greeley talked about go west young man, which was always a common call in the United States. Well, it's now edge. And edge is where um, the, the, the battle, which is a, a huge challenge to get new standards, new foundations of infrastructure in, new legislative you know, uh, policies to allow that data to be harnessed. And seems that this data is all um, going to be new. It's the perfect beachhead um, to adopt all these new standards because the data is not already having to be transitioned from a system that um, has been been deployed. So we see, um, you know, the Guy X framework being an important piece for the brains of the future economy. Um, and without showing how we're going to protect individuals' privacy and keep things secure and allow it to be federated and allow sovereignty, um, this will not happen. And um, that would be a, a huge setback for um, our communities. We also know that this is going to be supported immensely by you know, deep pocketed infrastructure investors because there's new assets being formed. Um, things like you know the the intelligent infrastructure that gets deployed within you know, cities. There's new property rights that are going to be able to be adopted once you have the infrastructure in place. And of course, there's a huge number of new services that will be enabled once this type of data is available and um, open to the the community. And our main project, um, you know, to, to work with Gaia um, um, first is uh, establishing a active digital twin within a P3, um, which will allow us to take many different um, industries data um, that has not already been uh, pulled together and uh, build it on top of the open exchange from day one. And this will be a, a great example of how um, Gaia and um, all the policies and procedures and um, technical foundations can be leveraged at, at scale. And this is being supported um, by many of the uh, federal agencies and uh, the city and states that we're working with. Uh, we see this as the first city scale active digital twin within the United States and a great use case to show how GAIA-X can secure and protect um, our data um, in the 21st century. And that is the conclusion. Um, in working with uh, Topio, 
Um, the Autonomy Institute is going to work extensively with with Gaia, adopting that framework and uh, you know bridging us into the 21st century by protecting data. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff.